Hello, this is Luke Thomas and the topic for today is two new criteria to make the diagnosis of lentigo maligna on the face. As everyone knows, dermoscopy reflects the anatomy and the anatomy is different on the face. That's why dermoscopy is also different. We have a flat dermal epidermal junction, a thin epidermis, and through this thin epidermis we can see better the melanophages, but also the blood vessels. But the most important feature on the face is enlarged adnexual structures that change the uh, disposition of the pigment at the dermal epidermal junction. That's why the original two-step diagnostic strategy used on dermoscopy is not applied on the face. Most of the knowledge we have on Lentigo Maligna comes from this paper by Schiffner and co-workers in Willi Stoll's group. This was a visionary paper describing the most important features of Lentigo Maligna and since 13 years nothing new has been really described uh, in lentigo maligna on the face. What was very important in Schiffner and co-workers paper is that they described the uh, features produced by the early invasion of the hair follicles by melanoma cells producing specific images of hair follicle invasion. And this air follicle invasion can also be seen by confocal microscopy with uh, horizontal sectioning. You can see that within the uh, hair follicle we have bright cells that represent the melanocytes. In their paper, Schiffner and co-workers describe the progressive invasion of the hair follicle. And briefly, this has four stages. The first stage is the uh, outlining of the air follicle by uh, the pigmentation of the air shaft seen by uh, the uh, en face vision and this produces C-shaped, O-shaped and signet ring images. Then around the air follicles some melanophages produce annular granular structures but when they're densified these annular granular structures become uh, lozengeal and these lozenge shaped structures are also called rhomboidal structures. They become more and more dense and after several days or months of progression then there is a complete disappearance of the follicular openings. But there are other symptoms and these are due to these blood vessels that are seen through a very thin epidermis. Uh, I must add that in some areas Lentigo maligna are not very pigmented so vessels are more visible than in other types of melanomas. And these vessels will produce very specific signs. They are different inside and outside the lesion and they produce also lozenge shaped structures that we called red rhomboidal structures. First of all, vessels are different inside. If we look at this lesion and if we outline the border of the lesion, we can see that the vessels are different outside and inside the lesion. Inside milky red areas, outside uh, arborizing vessels not sharply in focus like you see on sun exposed face. In this case also it's very different inside and outside the lesion. Outside arborizing vessels not sharply in focus, inside milky red areas and densified vessels with enlarged caliber. Again in this lesion which was uh, very regressive on histopathology. We can erase this part of the image that is due to the biopsy, but if we look at the borders, we can see that the vessels again are very different outside and inside, much denser inside than outside. Again, in this case, the vessels are different outside, arborizing, not in, not in focus, and densified 
and uh, different shape inside. But this not, does not apply to every case. In this case, for example, the vessels are exactly the same outside and inside the lesion. Red rhomboidal structures. We are very used after the work of Schiffner and co-workers to recognize these black rhomboidal structures. But red rhomboidal structures are also present and these are due to blood vessels. We are used to see these black rhomboidal structures, these annular granular structures, but if you look carefully, you have also red structures, lozengeal shaped, that are these red rhomboidal structures. You can see this image also, annular granular structures, and also uh, red rhomboidal structures. In some cases, it's possible to observe both signs. In this case, for example, the vessels are very different outside the lesion and inside the lesion. But the vessels inside are not only uh, more dense, they have these uh, lozengeal shape and they form red rhomboidal structures. These new symptoms have been described in this recently published paper and as you see these new symptoms are present in almost 60% of cases for the density of the vascular network and 40% for the red rhomboidal structures but we would like to propose to change the name of it. In fact what is important is to see that the vessels are different inside and outside the lesion, often enlarged often with increased density, but moreover, they are different inside. Thank you very much for your attention.